to be live. Oh shit, um, link might have changed. There's also 10 people watching. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh god, we're here. Works. Cool, yep. All right. We're live, hello everyone. Hey right, everybody. All 10 of you. Three of which are probably us. <laughs> oh, oh, no, 11. No. Oh. Moving on up in the world. Let's try this out. Uh, k and says, hey. Hey, k and A's. k and A's. Jerry Uwu said H. We'll pretend that's <laughs> hello. He said, he said H-I. But it's it's H. Yeah, the, uh, the API picks it up backwards, so it's just IH. <laughs> it's actually kind of neat because it's HI on my end. Oh, that's actually really cool. It's like yeah. event driven, asynchronous. Yeah, I got IH. Fascinating. Okay, well, um, I'll get oh, yeah, it's, away. it's upside down. That's why. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, H. There we go. Hi. He's beetle juicing. Well, cool. Um, Lathe, I'll get out of your way and uh, let you do your intro. Yeah, so um, today's presentation is uh, about Wireshark. Uh, it's Wireshark's, well, we'll go over what it is in a bit, but um, if you haven't signed in yet, make sure to sign in. I would do it, but uh, my phone is taped to my screen, so we're passing on that for now. All right, we can move on to the announcements. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one over. And don't forget to sign in again. Um, it is important for reasons. So go ahead and sign in um, with a QR code or hitting that URL. Remember, no virtual pizza if you don't sign in. All right. I assume you guys are in there like swimwear and move on. All right. So one announcement for today. Um, we're going to have a little CTF mentorship program. If you're interested in either making um, CTF challenges or teaching other people how to make CTF challenges, contact Crash in Discord. He'll help you out, get you set up, get you on our little CTF team. We're making, it, making CTFs big this year. So if any help we can get is appreciated. And with that said, we can get into the talk. All right. So now you're probably asking yourself why you're here. Um, well, we're going to learn about Wireshark. Uh, and right now, I'll go ahead and recommend that you download Wireshark if you haven't already. We're going to do a little bit of uh, an introduction demo, nothing too fancy. But if you want to follow along, you're welcome to. Um, and we'll get you started if you haven't before. Today we're going to use the GUI. We're not going to do any uh, command line stuff. So, um, you know, it can be hard enough figuring out what's going on in Wireshark as it is. So uh, that GUI helps a lot. Um, so if you have a chance, go ahead and download that uh, while I'm talking now. Um, so today we're going to cover what is Wireshark? What is Wireshark used for? Why do I care? We're going to tell you about some related tools, um, decrypting WPA and WPA2. Uh, we're going to talk about some common networking terms and definitions. 
And uh, last but definitely not least, we're going to do that little demo for you on uh, how do I get started. All right, uh, what is Wireshark? Uh, Wireshark is one of the most widely used protocol analyzers. It supports the offline analysis of live packet captures. It um, supports the captures of 802.11, or excuse me, IEEE 802.11, which if you're not familiar is a fancy term for Wi-Fi's. Um, supports the capture of ethernet, which is um, the rectangular hole in the side of your laptop, uh, possibly uh, in the back, depending on what you're working with. Uh, Bluetooth, token ring, FDDI, and some others as well. Um, it can also manage the decryption of protocols such as SSL, TLS, a little bit outside the scope of this um, of these slides, uh, decryption of web, WPA and WPA2, and others. WEP, um, if I'm not mistaken, is a, a wired equivalent privacy. That's that's the older technology that was used to uh, encrypt the traffic from your machine to a wireless access point over a wireless network. WPA and WPA2 now take that over. Uh, so you should not be using WEP. And I'll say it, it if you haven't already, it's uh, it might be worth your time to get into your router wireless access point and make sure that WEP is not enabled. But in fact, WPA2 is enabled. It's, it's much more secure. And uh, Excuse me. During this talk, we're also going to go over a little bit of how to decrypt the WPA2 um, traffic. We're not we're not going to demo that because that uh, for reasons, but um, yeah, we're going to go over that and at least kind of get you started, so where you can go out and research that on your own if you want to do that. And I suggest doing that because it's it's really cool um, little little project that you can work on. You can see some really cool stuff. Okay, what is Wireshark used for? Analyzing traffic in real time to help troubleshoot common network issues such as latency issues, dropped packets, malicious activity, and intercepting traffic coming and going from a machine to convert that binary into hu human readable format. Um, so if you can see the little picture, that's, that's a screenshot of uh, Wireshark grabbing some packets. If you look in the very bottom, you see like those kind of matrix figures of, of um, what looks maybe like nonsense. I don't, I don't know how good, well you can see that, but you can see uh, the darker blue highlight. That's, uh, that's hexadecimal. So that's, that's uh, the binary being grabbed off the wire or out of the air, and it's converting into hex for us. Right above that, you'll see the uh, lighter blue highlight, and that little section there, that's the actual human readable. It, it, puts it all nice and displays the information um, in an orderly fashion so so you can discern what's going on. Um, really cool, though. All right, why do you care? You care because, as we just said, you can troubleshoot network issues, uh, sniff packets of nearby devices, Use network passwords to decrypt traffic on WPA and WPA2 networks, protected, or excuse me, protected networks. Um, see all HTTP transmissions in clear text. Find out why your uncle takes a laptop into the bathroom. That's one of the most important topics of today. Uh, gather intel on a network you've gained access to. Right, so again, like I said before, we're going to uh, go over a little bit how to decrypt that WPA and WPA2. Um, but... To do so, we're going to need some passwords, uh, but you guys already know how to hack in and get those, right? I'm assuming. Okay. Um, so most data that, that we're going to see is encrypted because it's it's using HTTPS. That's what um, primarily web servers use nowadays. So you, you can still see a lot of good information. So that's why it's beneficial to still use Wireshark. But um, if there happens to be on a HTTP transmission, you can, you can see all that. Uh, plain dry, you can see everything, not just the DNS query, but the actual data that's being transferred. Um, so, yeah. Uh, you can also, we also care because you can detect network jamming attacks, 
Um, Wireshark aids in the knowledge of networking basics, like how to interpret packet headers, how DHCP works, and how the TCP IP stack works. Um, so yeah, the network jamming attacks, if someone is trying to de-auth you from the network, which is a technique that we'll see coming up that we'll use to um, actually break that WPA and WPA2 to see those transmissions, you can see somebody de -auth trying to de-auth you from the network. You can see those packets coming in. Um, with that, you can also see the MAC address. So that's why it's a good idea to spoof your MAC address before doing an attack like that if uh, you're simulating an attack because we're not actually attacking networks, right? We don't, we're setting up labs and experimenting with this stuff. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's a reason why you, you're going to want to spoof that Mac. All right, these are some related tools. Um, first, we have Snorts, an intrusion detection system, uh, which can auto automatically process PCAP files. Uh, Moloch deployable packet capture service for large networks. Uh, Airdump NG, it's a simple command line packet capture tool. Um, Meld, it's a hex diff tool, which can be used to uh, find patterns in TCP and UDP streams. All right, so this is kind of this is kind of the good stuff here. Let me just check this. All right, so this is kind of the good stuff. Um, I recommend kind of using this as a guide if you want to try it, and going out and figuring out how to do these things. Um, again, we're not going to be demoing this specifically. Uh, the main reason for that is. Uh, I don't want to have to commute to either the dean's office or maybe a courthouse to explain why uh, I shouldn't be in jail for the um, illegal things you did and why you probably should be in jail for them. But yeah, we're not going to demo that. And uh, I don't recommend you doing this on any network that you don't have permission to. Um, and ideally you're doing it on your own network. And I, I also recommend that you do because you can, you can learn a lot. It's a really cool, uh, really cool little lab. Um, so yeah, step one is you do need to have the network password and SSID. Um, there's a million tutorials on how to do some, uh, neat little script kitty stuff to get that if you don't already know. Um, but uh, if you say on your own network, you would still need the, uh, password and, and SSID. You'll use that information and you can either put that into um, a little section on wireshark.org or uh, whatever top level domain they use on the Wireshark website. And they'll actually, with, with the SSID and password, they'll spin up the PSK for you, or you can just put the SSID and password straight into Wireshark and it'll get it from there. But either way, you do have to have the information prior to decrypting the WPA and WPA2 um, information. So number two, switch network interface card into monitor mode. Uh, the second prerequisite is that you do have to have a network interface card that's capable of monitor mode. Um, right now, just transmitting data to and from your 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 PC, it's you, it's in managed mode. When you put it into monitor mode, that that will just pick up packets. It just grabs packets out of the air, off the wire, whichever, um, and that's what you use to still the packets of, of nearby devices uh, with essentially without their consent. And three, it may be good to spoof your MAC address. We already talked about earlier how if you're doing the deauth attack or, or leaving any other traces anywhere else, you're going to have your MAC address. Um, and that's not good. Four, use a tool like Arrow Dump to scam nearby target access points and individual clients. Um, yeah, so like on Kali Linux, you can use Arrow Dump, um, and it'll it'll help you get the information, um, like the BSSID of the access point and the channel it operates on. Uh, and going further from that, you'll get you'll pin down an individual client, um, and get that uh, get that client's information. And number five, input the network password and SSID into Wireshark. 
Uh, yeah, so again, you, you can put that information into Wireshark or go straight to their website um, where you can input it and it'll actually shoot you out a PSK, which is, again is one of the prerequisites to decrypting this data. Uh, six, capture nearby packets using the interface in monitor mode. So once all that's going down, you're while in monitor mode, you're picking up all the packets around you. Um, and it's still encrypted because you, you, you need one more thing. Um, you, ne you need to be there for the, for the four-way handshake, uh, which comes in the form of ePoll e packets. So um, another exchange happens um, after you have the, the network password, and, that, and that's the four-way handshake. You have to be there for that. Um, and number eight, deauthor or wait for a target to disconnect naturally. So to get this, those ePoll packets, you have to sit there as uh, the client connects to the network. So if the client's already connected, you're going to have to wait for them to disconnect naturally, or you're going to have to send that deauth attack that we've been talking about um, and disconnect them that way. Number nine, verify ePoll packets and filter packets by target IP. So verify the ePoll packets. You can filter that in Wireshark to just verify that you actually got those packets. And as soon as those packets come in, um, you'll start seeing IP addresses and stuff. So you, and then you can filter it by that IP address and specifically uh, see what that, what they're doing from that IP address. And uh, 10, bask in the fruits of your labor or maybe go to therapy because you don't like what you saw, um, depending on, on uh, whose traffic you're decrypting, which shouldn't be the case since you're only decrypting your own traffic or uh, a network you have per permission to do that on. All right, and now everyone's favorite part, common networking definitions. All right, protocols are an established set of rules that determine how data is transmitted between different devices in the same network. Uh, the way I like to think about them is um, I like to think of them as different languages in a way, um, but just like onions and just like the Tor browser and just like ogres, they have layers. So it's not just one language. Um, they actually layer the languages. So it, it's not just one protocol normally. It, it's it's um, HTTP using TCP or HTTPS using TCP. Um, so thinking of it just like languages isn't quite enough, but I think that helps. Um, so TCP is, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, transmission control protocol is what it stands for. Uh, and that's a connection oriented protocol that enables data to flow across a network in a reliable way. And that relies on a, a three-way handshake. I believe it's, uh, what is it? ACK, SYNAC, ACK, or SYN? SYNAC, ACK, one of those. It's a three-way handshake, though. And what that does is it ensures that um, both client and server are, are connected in a way where if a packet drops, it'll be retransmitted. So it guarantees that you get all the data that you're wanting to, to get. Um, and that's a that's good thing about TCP and why it kind of dominates the TCP IP world. Um, and next is UDP, uh, which is User Datagram Protocol. It, that's a connectionless protocol that it does not ensure that all packets are sent or received. Um, and you, you may be asking why we would even have UDP if TCP is so reliable. And uh, well, the point of UDP is you, you don't necessarily always want or need to make sure every single packet uh, that was sent um, is one you received. So say if you were maybe streaming a movie or playing video games, you don't necessarily need every last little packet. You just need them all there quickly. You just want those packets just thrown at you, thrown at you, thrown at you. Um, let's see here. Let me read these messages. Can you only see the decrypted traffic after the target is off the network? No, you can see the decrypted traffic while they're still on there. You, um, but the good thing about Wireshark is that um, you can grab all those packets 
and then you can go offline and analyze them. But after they're off the network, um, they'll reauthenticate, and that's when you're seeing everything when they're already reauthenticated and they're on the network. So if they're off the network completely and don't come back on, you can't see anything unless you've already grabbed those packets, uh, and then you're 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 out of there seeing, watch, looking at the packets um, somewhere else. Oh, okay, and there's the answer right above that. Good. <laughs> All right, great. Thanks, everybody. Um, so let's continue. HTTP. Uh, HTTP is the primary underlying protocol used by web clients and servers to transmit and receive data. So not a whole lot of sites just use HTTP anymore. But if you happen to find one and somebody happens to be using it, you can see everything they're doing in clear text 100%, uh, which is why it's not not uh, used a whole lot anymore. Um, if you add an S to that HTTP, though, if you add SSL or TLS encryption to it, that becomes HTTPS. Um, so HTTPS with an added layer of security, or HTTP with an added layer of security provided by TLS, which is the replacement for SSL. That can get a little bit confusing. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. I think I think we go a little bit more into uh, the SSL TLS. Let's see. Yep, there it is. So SSL TLS, the primary security protocol used to encrypt transmission between a web application and server. So that can be a little bit confusing because now it is TLS. TLS is, is the encryption used. SSL is what it used to be called, but it's still used a lot. Uh, Jerry asks, what is the point of the DAUTH? So the DAUTH, the point of the DAUTH is because you need to be um, sitting in the middle of the transmission when the client um, disconnects and reconnects. Right, so that the four-way, so after a client disconnects, they have to re-authenticate to the network. They can't just join and they're good to go. They join and they're re they, they have uh, the four-way handshake gets completed again. So it sends uh, between client and access point, they send back ePoll packets, which is going to hold the key to decrypting this traffic. So that's why we need them to disconnect and reconnect, because during that disconnection and reconnection is when they transfer keys, or I, just one key. I believe it's uh, symmetric encryption. Um, but yeah, that's, that's why. Hey, I'm going to hop in too. Yeah, so particularly like with um, with WEP, um, the biggest problem is that it had what it's called uh, a weak initialization vector. So in order, and the initialization vector was part of the four-way handshake. Um, it was a secret and they, both the server and the client would transact it. And then for, in a way of it, then a quasi secure way. And there, um, that's the basis of the rest of the encryption. And that encryption from there was a lot stronger. So in order to get back to that really weak initialization vector that we can actually solve for, we would de-auth them. So it would force them to reconnect. And then we'd see the handshake and we'd see the weak initialization vector. We'd be able to solve for it. And then boom, now we pwn them. Yeah. So Jerry Owo says he's got it. Sorry. Awesome. Thank you. That's good. Yeah, I haven't I haven't uh, dove too deep into WEP, so that's that's good. That's good information. Um, all right, let's keep going. Let's see. Yep, wet there an outdated wireless security protocol, which is still in use. So, like, uh, and I said earlier, it's it might be worth your time to um, to get into your router access point and and ensure that it's using WPA two, um, because like my own, uh, I. Uh, um, I had the option uh, of using WEP, but it was um, it was not the default, luckily. But uh, you you want to make sure that that's the case that you're using WPA or WPA2. Um, right. So WPA WPA2 primary means of network security used by wireless access points utilizes four ePoll frames to exchange the key between the client and wireless access point to encrypt the data being transferred, known as the four-way handshake. So Jerry, that's that's a little bit, so four-way handshake and um, is what we're looking for there with a disconnect and reconnect. Um, yeah, let's see what we got. So now we're about ready for the demo. Um, 
And I'll say again, if you haven't already, it might be worth your time to go ahead and download Wireshark. Um, you can use it on Windows or Linux. I'm going to be using it on Linux today, but it works just as well on Windows. Um, and the most important thing after getting Wireshark, even if you don't pay attention to me, is to be curious because um, it, it does look like Mandarin to somebody who does not know Mandarin uh, when you first open it up. If you haven't, if you haven't looked at something like that. Um, and he's got the link up there. Uh, thanks for that. So if you guys are interested in downloading it, go ahead and shoot over there, download and install, and um, follow along. We're not going to do anything too crazy, but we're going to we're going to take a look into it and see if we can't get a little more familiar and get you guys asking questions. Yeah, this is kind of just the three step process that we're gonna going to be doing for the demo. We're going to select the network interface that we intend to listen on uh, from Wireshark. We're going to start listening until we think we have all the packets that we want to capture and analyze. Then we're going to stop the capture. Then we'll inspect and learn about all the packets we received or learn a little bit about the packets we received. Right, so what is that? Uh, sudo apt install Wireshark, something along those lines uh, for you Linux folks. And it uh, comes right out of the box for you. All right. If anybody has any questions, go ahead and uh, throw them in the chat, and we'll see if we can't get you answered before we start this demo. Sen Senak Ak. <laughs> Thank you, John. So for the TCP three-way handshake, um, sin, synac, ack. So what is it? The client sends sin, the server sends synac, and then the client sends ack, I believe. Sin being, hey, can I connect? Synac being the server responding, yes, you can. And then ack being the client again saying, okay, thanks. And then they connect and they have a secure connection where they can, or I don't know about secure, but they have a connection where Drop packets will be resent. All right, so let me go ahead and fire up a little bit of the demo and we'll see what we can see. Okay, so hopefully by now you've downloaded Wireshark or you've decided uh, you don't care, you want to just watch, and that's okay too. Perfectly fine. But now we're going to go ahead and continue. So you can see here this is the list of uh, network interfaces you have. Yours are going to look a little bit different from mine probably um, since I'm on a virtual machine. Um, the good thing you can do if you have no idea of which one your PC is using to send and receive data is to do something like open a browser. And upon doing so, you'll see some start to go a little weird. That means they're sending and receiving data. And we'll go to Amazon. We won't go to Amazon. And you can see, oop, let me get this guy. But you can see the needle going up and down as I'm hitting sites. So you want to select the one with the most traffic. I'm going to start capturing right here. And automatically it's going, it's capturing packets. It's grabbing packets um, coming and going on that network interface. So right now I'm on Amazon. See if I can go to a 
see if there's any HTTP sites alive out there. And I know there are because you can see me poking around here. And let's go to Weevil. Uh, Oh, man. Introduction to Weevil. So I don't know why somebody would be on this site, but as you'll see coming up, um, we'll know it if they are. All right, so after you grab all the packets you want, you can hit this little stop button um, so you're not just unnecessarily grabbing packets after packet after packet after packet. Um, and then we can start looking around a little bit. So for starters, this is the hex. So if I'm, I'm going to click a packet here, this is the hexadecimal representation of this packet that I'm clicked on. And you can see <laughs> yes, it's true. If you've been creeping on pets in the bathroom like your uncle on a laptop, you're uh, everyone knows about it. Everyone sees you, you weirdo. All right. So, yeah, this is the hex, and you can see it corresponds to all this information here, how it's going down. Let me see. This is the translation in the in a human readable and where you actually read all this information. Um, this is the good stuff. But essentially here for each packet, you have a packet number, the time it was captured. You see this is packet number 1,692. It was capture, captured 36 seconds after I started this. Um, it came from this IP, uh, 157.140.2.32, and it came into my local network at 192.168.179.129 uh, as a TCP um, packet. And this is Finn, so what is that, like a close? I'm not sure. But yeah, so you can just kind of poke around here and see what's going on. And um, let me go back to the packet from one of them. Yeah, I liked, I liked 169 too. So from there, here's where the um, kind of extends the information here. Transmission control. I'm going to look at something a little better than that. All right. And you just kind of get a whole, whole host frame length of information going top to bottom. You have the destination Mac. You have the source Mac here. All kinds of nasty stuff. Um, let's see here. A couple things I want to see though. Let's see the HTTP packets. Let's see what they do. You can see the port numbers to and from. You can even see the browser somewhere around here. You see the brow browser that's being used by me. So all that's good information. Um, and even one interesting thing is even, let's see what else. Even if it's not HTTPS traffic, you can always still see all of the DNS requests in um, plain text. So by the way, this is the little filter bar up here. This is where, this is the good stuff, how you can filter exactly what packets you do and don't want to look at um, with this little guy up here. So if I'm setting this to DNS, it's going to just show me all the DNS packets. And uh, DNS, if you don't know, is, is domain, uh, excuse me, domain name, server, or system, depending on who you ask. And um, this is how you resolve um, IP addresses and domain names and vice versa. Uh, so if you type in youtube.com, um, it says no wait, you mean 
and and then it puts the the IP address of YouTube or any other site. So just from this, you can see every site visited. So this is always clear right here. You will see be able to see any site that was visited. My species, yeah, this is all the my species stuff. So encrypted or not, you'll be able to see every website. And let's see if there's any more. So if you grab one, this is what I'm assuming looks like to be from the Weevil, possibly. Uh, right click, follow, follow TCP stream. And that will be good. So I'm going to restart this packet capture so we can kind of filter out the good stuff. I use pull site silly. Let's go back to Weevil. Start the cap pack, excuse me, packet capture again. And that's set on a filter right now, so that's not catching anything. And But you can see down here that it has 269 packets. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that capture. And I'm going to take this filter off. Hit the go. And now we're looking at all the uh, packets again, primarily of that um, weevil nonsense. So what I'm trying to do is find that um, follow the HTTP stream. What you can do here is when you're um, using HTTP, you can follow the stream. You can actually see the exact contents of the website. I'm not having as much luck as I should be having on this. And I'm not sure why right now, but yeah. Right, okay, so moral of the story, download Wireshark, um, ask questions and start to play, and get to know networking a little better, and finally find out what your creepy uncle is doing every time he takes your laptop into the restroom to determine if you should maybe throw that laptop away uh, and start over. So that's going to go ahead and conclude this, uh, this topic for today. Do you have anything else for him, John or Lave? I think I'm good. Um, unless you guys have any questions, you can just throw them in chat, and we can, uh, we can do our best to answer them. Yeah. Um, it's, Ooh, if you're on your own... Site. Um, if you're on your own network, then it's fine. But. Yeah, that's a good question. So is this legal or not? It is totally legal to view packet captures. Um, the question is, it's well, the conditional is as long as you have ownership or authorization. So if you're looking at your own network, you're fine. If you're on a public network, probably not. Um, if you're doing a penetration test and you have a contract, probably. Let's see. 
the Weevil website didn't show up, what does that mean? You're not cool I enough know. to know about the Weevils. <laughs> um, sit on Wireshark. Are you not getting the packet capture? No, or... I mean, uh, it's worked every other time in the past. Before this exact time right now. But now it's gobbledygook. So. Not sure. are, are you using HTTPS? Sure. No. Check uh, let's see. And it's, watch I mean, watch weevils.net using a uh, let's encrypt now. I, I mean it shows as HTTP right here. See? Is uh, it, so there there's the possibility that yeah, you said oh. oh, I think I know exactly. Hold on I'm a little bit. I if think our I connection going. is our connection doing this. Look for a compression. Hold on, pull that pull up the headers again on that HTTP. Um ta -ta -ta -ta. In the HTTP 200 OK, look for content type image JPEG. Well, that's why you can't read that, because that's a JPEG. Yeah, that's an image. So right now, we're actually reading the HTTP headers to see what the information is. Mm -hmm. um, that too, yep. Yeah, this is more JPEG. Yeah. You know, I bet uh, try and clear your cache and hit that website again. Or do a different one. Yeah. I keep doing the C for site. Alright. So. We'll go to old reliable here. To learn about the birth of the web, not that. That's HTTP. Yes, this one is HTTP. Though. Nope. While he's doing that, um, another good way to, to use Wireshark if you're catching packets and you have no idea what they're doing um, is to just look for similar packets. So a lot of times the the headers and stuff will be the same. A lot of the data will be the same. Um, like, let's say you're intercepting some API calls or something. Uh, chances are a lot of the data is staying the same and only, uh, like, in a JSON packet, which is what most APIs use to send data, um, there'll be, like, one section that has changed, um, but the rest of the data is all the same. So if you have kind of some idea of what the traffic is, you can then use that to a lot of times, maybe not decrypt, but at least figure out what the data is and what's what it's doing. Yeah, help me go everywhere. <laughs> I'll say also another cool thing you do with Wireshark is put it in parallel with um, an application like TCP view and TCP view shows all the open ports on your machine and any port communicating, just any detail about any port you can, you could want to uh, want to ever see or know about. And um, you can, you can kind of correlate that to what you're looking at with Wireshark to see what's going on and, and see if there's anything that should or shouldn't be there. And that's a, just another cool kind of thing you can do. Any more questions? I'm getting like a million acts in here that I don't remember seeing um, generally when I do this. Are they all coming from the same IP? No. Because it is, it's possible that it's getting, um, it's pulling data from a different site or server. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not sure what's going on here. But 
but if there's um not any more questions we can try and wrap up the presentation yep Yeah, so Wireshark, it's fun to poke around. Um, you can use it on your own network. And a lot of times you'll, you'll notice stuff. If you see, uh, for some reason, your smart TV is shoot, sending packets while it's turned off, that might be worth investigating. Um, there's a lot you can learn, a lot, a lot of stuff you can diagnose. Uh, one of the cool things about Wireshark is that it's basically a read-only. You can't really break stuff using it. You're just a, a fly on the wall. So don't be afraid to try it. You have anything else to say, Matt? I'm good. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining. We'll uh, probably hang out and if you have any questions, you can uh, check Discord. The link's in the description if you're watching the stream. And we'll, we'll be happy to answer anything you have. Yeah. Thank you guys for showing up. Thanks, everyone. See you guys. Bye.